Josh Brown, are you sick of open world games yet? No. Good. Would you like a Resident Evil 9? Yes. In a bit of a Resident Evil open world theme? Yes. Good, because that's apparently what's coming. This comes from known veteran Resident Evil leaker, aesthetic gamer, slash Dusk Golem, who I feel like we've been covering for like six, seven years now. As long as I've been alive, I think, <laughs> yeah. Dude's changed his name, um, or whoever it is has changed their name, um, to keep delivering a hot, spicy Resident Evil leaks and hot takes, etc. Um, saying that a Capcom have apparently been using Dragon's Dogma 2's development as proof that they can take the RE engine into an open world framework, um, and that'll apparently be the case with Resident Evil 9. He also mentions Monster Hunter Wilds as being another fully open world game. That game was always thought of as an open world game, but it was more like segmented parts of an open world. Um, doing a fully open world Monster Hunter, retaining the series DNA, is apparently the overall mandate for the future of Monster Hunter and the future of Resident Evil, um, and RE9 is what's mentioned specifically alongside Monster Hunter as uh, the next open world thing, assumedly in the vein of uh, tech-wise as Dragon's Dogma 2, which isn't that good when Dragon's Dogma 2 doesn't run very well. That is true. Hopefully far fewer dragons and less spells in Resident <laughs> Evil 9, though who knows? We yeah, have werewolves know. in the last one. Scott, to me, I don't know how you feel about this pivot. Mm. To me, honestly, it makes a lot of sense for Resident Evil, yes. I think. The past few games, and I'm including the remakes in that, have kind of been mini open worlds anyway, especially yeah. Village. Village, to me, has a Dark Souls-style open world, and no, I don't mean it like that. What I mean <laughs> by that is it's one big location, and you can't go anywhere you want, mm. but it's all kind of connected. It all stems from the village. It all springs out from there. You need to unlock certain areas, but it's all kind of contained essentially it's not like you're getting on a helicopter and jumping mm. to a brand new map it's 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 close to an open world anywhere so if they kind of expand on that with resident evil 9 and just say yeah we're we're making the score bigger mm. we're keeping the interconnectedness that makes resident evil so satisfying to play we're keeping that kind of idea that you'll you'll be collecting keys to unlock certain areas or we'll mm. be giving it that metroidvania flavor mm. as long as they keep that structure I'm totally fine with it going open world because I think they're practically there anyway. That's the thing. I really got, Yeah, I want to talk about the, the first person, third person split in a sec, but that energy that their Resident Evil Village had really, really well, that whole mopping up the map energy where it's like, you can tell, they have like, Capcom never get championed as having some of the best maps in video games. Yeah, right, yeah. But like that whole thing of like, oh, there's something else in this room, you know where to go to start looking around or whatever, to 100% a, um, a location. That stuff, like you said, would work really well on, a, on an even bigger um, scope or whatever. But yeah, what do you think about the first third person split stuff? I thought someone had already leaked that the next Resident Evil was gonna be third person due to how successful RE2, 3, and 4 have been um, across the last few years, um, the last five so, so years. Um, but I couldn't find that, I couldn't nail that down. So I wonder if that was just a rumor, that was just a general talking point. Um, personally, I want third person if we're gonna be doing vehicles to get around an open world or something like that. Okay, I yeah. don't want Far Cry style first person driving. Get it the hell away from me. I mean, one, Far Cry driving is actually really good, Scott ah, Tilford. Uh, but two, why does there need to be driving at all? Why can't it be <laughs> like uh, a smaller open world where you are still exploring on foot? Maybe you mm. can sprint more or something. I don't know. Like when I, when I, It depends where you... I, I'll get to your great first person, third person <laughs> split question in a second. But I think open world means a lot of different things to a lot of different people because you can take open world as... Skyrim or mm. the Starfield or something huge or like an Ubisoft open world where it's like True. this big sandbox and you can go anywhere and you're kind of ticking off boxes. But to me, open world also means something like Arkham City, which I'd say is way more focused, has way more detail than mm. something like a Just Cause. And you can get around that map more easily. You don't need vehicles or mounts or anything like that. So when I say I want Resident Evil to go open world, that's the kind of open world I mean, where it's big and it's open, but it's not endless and it yes. has focus and it has depth to it. Like the Naughty Dog style. The Naughty Dog style. I like Scott the Naughty Tilford. Dog style from like Uncharted 4 Lost Legacy. But like, yeah, the fact that this leak um, is mentioning the next Resident Evil in the same breath as Dragon's Dogma and the upcoming Monster Hunter Wilds um, and that being the sort of like project goal that apparently like, it makes so much sense now in retrospect why Capcom would do a sequel to Dragon's Dogma um, if it was mostly a test bed for the next main installment of something. Yeah. Because um, otherwise, I don't think any of us saw Dragon's Dogma 2 coming as the next thing they were going to greenlight. Um, but I feel like that 
does make sense. And um, like I said, there's some performance issues with Dragon's Dogma 2, but overall, that the RE engine being on a much bigger scale looks absolutely gorgeous. Like, yeah. that thing looks lifelike, the ray tracing is gorgeous. The game kind of sold me on ray tracing in a way that nothing else really has. Um, and I think that at least that visual punch is so satisfying. And if you start, um, you know, if you explore that game at night, you get a real feel for how pitch black um, and ambient a lot of that stuff can feel and uh, how important light sources are. And I was like, if you just transplant that into a, a horror scenario entirely yeah. and have a, a horror open world that's in pitch black uh, darkness or whatever, then that could be a really cool way to go. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of um, the size of it, if there's, uh, well, in the terms of the leak, citing Dragon's Dogma 2, then how do you get around that open space? Dragon's Dogma 2's um, solution is giving you ox carts and ferry stones and things like that that's all kind of meted off against like specific points you can walk to. Hmm. Um, and I wonder if that would just be the case as well, but I just, I don't know, I went down the whole Metal Gear Solid 5 thing where I was like, give us a Jeep. Give yeah. it, you know, Leon Kennedy in a Jeep or something. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I want him in a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll give him a bike. <laughs> give him a bike. He needs the Akira bike. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think, you know, you've always had ways to get from location to location in Resident Evil games. You know, even in Resident Evil 4 Remake, you have the sort of roller coaster cart that gets you around the castle. God, yeah. I think you could implement some things like that in order to make the space more explorable mm. and easily explorable while still keeping the scale kind of down and without having to go so big you need vehicles. Mm. Um, but yeah, whether you want to explore that space in first person or third person, I think that's interesting because for me, with Resident Evil as a whole, I want the main games to stay at first person mm -hmm. as long as we are still getting third person remakes. The moment they cut off the remakes, I'm fine for the main games to go back to third mm. person, but I really like the variety that gives us. You know, the, the remakes are always in the, what I would describe as the RE4 over the shoulder style third person. And I love that we get that experience every couple of years. Mm -hmm. But if that was the only flavor of Resi that we got, I would personally think they were kind of missing a trick a little right. bit because I, I'm a huge fan of Seven. I'm a huge fan of Village, especially the VR versions. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I like the horror that you can get out mm -hmm. of a first person perspective. And hell, I thought the shooting in Village was really good. I thought it was really good. Oh, yeah, man, like a be... So, in. For the purest sake of variety, I think there's more you can do in a first-person space when you have that complemented with third-person remakes. Yeah. It just gives you something different because Capcom want Resident Evil to be an annual franchise in that they have something every year. So if all we're, in my opinion, all we're getting are those third-person games every single year mm. just in different forms, I worry that would... Uh, become too familiar and lose its luster. I wonder if like layout wise as well, if you have an open space, but you have certain parts on that map that you're going to that are kind of like the Beneviento house in Village, yeah. where you're going into a level, kind of how Arkham City did it, where it's like, if you took Arkham Asylum and then just like just shattered it and you have little connecting points, but you're going into levels kind of thing, as opposed to everything happening in the open world, maybe that's a, a split. Yeah. Your friend and mine, the evil within too, exactly. did very, very well yes. um, with that stuff. That was a kind of like a prototype open world um, horror game and it's immaculate at it. It's only two levels in that whole game, but it's really good. When did that game come out? Was it 2017? 2017, I think. It's yeah. been seven years since that game came out. Why has no one ripped it off? That yeah. approach to open world horror, to me, made the evil within two one of my favorite horror games mm. ever because what you got with the open world was a constant sense of surprise. You know, when you play, and I, I love linear, um, a linear-ish survival horror games. I mean, Resident Evil 4 Remake is now one of my favorite games of all time, <laughs> but you can kind of get familiar with the cadence and the flow of those games. Mm -hmm. You can kind of know when we're going into a quiet bit of the pacing. You know when things are going to ramp up. You kind of know if this is an area that might have some jump scares around the yeah, corner or yeah. something. What I loved about the Evil Within 2's open world was that every corner was surprising and you couldn't, like... You couldn't guess what was coming next. You could walk into a random house and suddenly it would be the most insane boss fight mm -hmm. you've ever experienced. And you just thought you were going in there to pick up some supplies. And suddenly this monster is coming out of the ground. It's crawling out the <laughs> fireplace. It's a huge story beat that you've just stumbled upon. And that element of surprise to me is so integral to horror as an entire genre. And by peppering those surprises throughout an open world, you know, Elden Ring style or something. Mm. I just think the potential for horror there is like crazy. And I would love to see 
a Silent Hill or a Resident Evil really capitalize on mm. that with the amount of lessons those franchises have learned over the years. I loved um, the bit in between in Evil Within 2 as well, like the whole, you're getting stalked by various enemies on the streets, like you're in this little town, you're taking cover behind a, a car, but then you hear like a moan behind you and say, oh my God, I need to go somewhere. And um, then you have those sort of dynamic encounters with enemies in closed off spaces. Maybe you're making your last stand in some random garage somewhere or whatever. It reminded me of um, Metal Gear Solid 2 when the guards would come try and find you. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. you, you run ahead of them and then they, they, that, that area was about to be scuttled kind of thing. Um, Deadly Premonition did it as well, but not that many games have done the um, dynamic sort of um, trying to chase you down yeah. in a small space thing. Um, I think there's so much more you could do with that. Yeah, I'm curious what this is. I um, Capcom have obviously so much experience with open worlds at this point, like Monster Hunter, Dragon's Dogma 2, um, but whether they can make it still feel like a Resident Evil, um, there's a way that this could slip off and be like Modern Warfare 3. <laughs> so I just, there's a, there's a whole thing. Whenever people, whenever devs, especially legacy devs with legacy IP, say we're doing an open world version of it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, how do you take a legacy feel and make it work with a genre that you've never really done before? No, I totally get it. And I get this people might be cynical about like the genre because yeah, it could easily devolve into <laughs> Far Cry with a Resident Evil skin. But I, I think it's a natural progression. Like mm. we've been talking about Village a lot, and to me, the blueprint of how to do an open world Resident Evil game is already there. Mm. Give us those bespoke areas and missions that allow us to experience things like the Beneviento House, but also take its approach to side missions where you're returning to previous areas and suddenly there's a huge boss there mm. and you're hunting down special weapons. As long as they can really nail that sense of survival horror flow where you're progressing your character but you're never feeling too strong or overpowered, mm -hmm. I think they can nail it in the same way that Resident Evil 4 nails its progression while having a more explorable village that you're, again, backtracking through to complete side missions that were yeah. there in the first one. You know, revisiting houses. I think that's such a great part of Resident Evil 4 when you go back to the village and, the, and a storm has kind of destroyed some of the houses and changed the layout of it. Mm. Like, make it a little bit dynamic like that so you're never getting too familiar with your area in the environment. And I think you can have a juicy recipe for <laughs> open world survival horror gameplay, I think. Just make it juicy. Oh, give us the Spencer Mansion back, you know, just put that in there somewhere. Yeah.